welcome back to another episode of Underdog Podcast. Hopefully you guys had a good day yesterday. Hopefully your week is going okay so far. What is it? Wednesday, right? Wednesday? Hump day in the middle of the week. Hopefully you got something planned for the weekend. Hopefully you say, fuck the weekend. We got something planned for today, tomorrow. Don't wait till your so-called weekend and your day's off to do something. Every day is a chance to do something great, amazing, all that good shit. Me and my son had a good time yesterday at the park. Uh, but my daughter's off with her aunt, so it's just me and the guy hanging out and stuff. And uh, a lot of times just uh, playing with each other, playing a video game, well, not video games, uh, basketball, going out to the park and playing basketball. And <laughs> just like I told y'all yesterday, uh, yesterday's episode of the podcast, the second I got off, I was in here trying to uh, upload the podcast stuff and then uh, watching some YouTube videos check up on some markets and stuff like that and then or some inf- crypto information rather and then here comes my son uh dad remember when you said last night are we gonna do this and and i was like see always plotting man everyone's always planning something man it's, it's, somebody always has a plan somewhere and i tell him i always have a plan and i'm proud of him for him having a plan i just need him to do that in all aspects of life not just when it's time to go play with his friend or whatever all right let's hop into it Got an article here uh, from Newsweek via the MSN website. <laughs> I don't know why I, these MSN websites keep showing up. I just when I do when I search uh, certain topics on DuckDuckGo, it, it just always pops up MSN. Whatever, I just say whatever. The matter, I mean, it's just on one website, but it goes through. But it's coming from other articles, other websites, and stuff like that. Anyway. So it says, China bird flu strain infects human in first reported case globally. Now, I just wanted to talk about this because <laughs> it's almost like you're thinking it. Here we go again. Like, what the fuck type shit is going to go on with this? Like, because this is what happened in January 2020. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Pats, it was, shouldn't have been contacted. It shouldn't have jumped from animals and humans yet. Oh, yeah, it's not really that serious and all that other stuff. And I mean, it was all, the right with the initial things they said anyways. It's just they downplayed it at first until they were ready to have a choreographed, orchestrated attack on all aspects and, and infrastructures of modern society last year. So it says a man hospitalized with a fever in eastern China. This shit better not be no near Wuhan lab. I swear to God. <laughs> and you often think, like, there's a lot of viruses that come out of China and stuff like that. I don't know, a billion people. I don't know, maybe you have people too close together. I, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of medical, theoretical, uh, medical theories on why you tend to see a lot of viruses and stuff come out of China. Then again, they're probably just experimenting on their own people. I mean, it, it's, it's what everyone does, man. It's, it's, it's the cost of doing business. You need healthy tech, uh, not healthy, you need viable test subjects in the sense of, well, they just need to be alive. <laughs> and they need to be uh, random uh, controlled experiments. So the randomness is the randomness of the uh, different people, the genetic makeup and stuff, controlled experiment. Is, well, you already control the population and you pay attention to what they're doing and stuff. So now you can detail all the types of adverse reactions to vaccinations or just to different new uh, strains of viruses and stuff. If viruses exist in the manner in which they claim to exist. Talked about before germ theory versus terrain theory. I'm starting to realize terrain theory is very, very, very more plausible than germ theory ever could be. Maybe with bacteria, but when we're talking about viruses and stuff, nah, terrain theory is where it's at to me. So it says, uh, yeah, Eastern China has been confirmed as the world's first human case of H1ON3 bird flu infection. The country's top health authority reported on Tuesday. So we're back to bird flu, not H1N1. We're at H1O in three. That's what I tell you, man. Like, there's a new virus all the time. There's a new strain. It's always something. There's an epidemic, pandemic. There's always something that damn near almost every year. But no one pays attention to it. This is last year. They had the media. You had your politician. You had your celebrities. Everybody was in on it, right? Everybody was in on it. 
And now I got to hear words COVID for the rest of my fucking life. Now I got to hear words of Corona for the rest of my fucking life. Nobody want to hear that shit, man. Nobody wants to hear those words. Things that they're trying to popularize and stuff. Uh, it says a 41-year-old resident of Xinjiang in the coastal Jiangsu province developed a fever and other undisclosed symptoms on April 23rd and was admitted to a local health facility on April 28th, China's National Health Commission said in a press release on its website. So you already know right there, it's probably, it's all a lie anyways. <laughs> where, where the details are being stretched or where the shit being completely made up, I don't even know. I just, it's coming out of China. I'm, I don't trust the Chinese Communist Party. I mean, let's be honest here. Obviously, no one, ha no, no, nobody has any problem with the actual citizens of any nation. The majority of people around the world just want to go about their regular day-to-day -day life doing whatever the fuck that is that they do. You have a small percentage of population, extremely small percentage of the population that's vol that's volatile, that's violent, and that will hurt other people. And then you have even more of extremely part of pop small part of the population that are greedy and trying to find ways to amass uh, money, power, resources to hurt other people along the way as well. The majority of us just mind our own fucking business, don't care about anything else <laughs> other than what we're doing that day and what we're doing a few years from now, what we're go what's going on in our personal lives and relationships. That's it. Some of us is a little nefarious than others, that's all. So it says last Friday, subsequent uh, sequencing done by the Beijing Base Center for Disease Control what the fuck? Be okay, Beijing based Chinese Center for Disease Control. Are, is that is th does it just translate over like that? From Mandarin, or are we just really we we just gave it a American sounding name? I mean, this article is from Reuters. Oh no, my fault. Next article I'm talking about is from Reuters. Yeah, this is from Newsweek. Uh, whatever. Uh, no other cases of uh, H1ON3 infection in humans have ever been reported anywhere else in the world. The commission noted, yeah. <laughs> so, here, so here's your patient zero right here. Here's your patient zero. This 41-year-old person. And 41-year-olds, he should be so-called young and healthy. This is your patient zero. This, this is it right here. However, the source of the Xinjiang infection remains unclear. Of course it does. <laughs> of course it does. Uh, said a patient who was not named was in stable condition and would be discharged soon. Uh, quarantine, close contacts, no anomalies, and the discovered has been discovered thus far. I all I want to know is where we go from here. Right, is this something that we're just gonna, you know, not say nothing else about? What the fuck? Did I just see ludicrous and stupid ad? I don't know what it is, but a lot of celebrities all of a sudden popped up on the Discovery Plus network uh, platform and stuff. Whatever, that's be, be beyond besides the point. It's not even talk about that. It says according to China's National Health Agency, the province was ordered to carry out epidemic prevention measures and form a task force for risk assessment. Further analysis confirmed H1ON3 as having avian origin so bird while the pathogen was also not effective at human to human transmission so if that's the initial thing same thing they kind of had a almost kind of initial results with a so-called uh stars code 2 your your disease uh covid19 so to me it's like is this nothing and they're going to turn into something or is it something and they're denying it acting like it's nothing. You see what I'm saying? Like it can go with different perspectives it can go different ways, how they want to go about this. And really you have the way of the government and how they want to go about it. And you have the way of the media and how they want to go about it. But usually the media more than likely the media is just a reflection of what government sentiment is saying anyways, behind closed doors, really <laughs> are, what they want them to say, even even if it's not behind closed doors. It says it's a strain of low pathogenicity among poultry. Experts have concluded. So now we got to worry about chicken supply. 
Just you know, maybe maybe what it is, maybe what this is is you're trying to make sure that you have your chicken supply be controlled. So we're not gonna farm raise animals and stuff like that, even though our feed fed them in, in these small cages stuff like that. We're gonna do genetically modified clone chicken. Remember, Singapore is the first nation to authorize the first government nation. A first government of a nation to authorize the cloning of chicken meat being given out by <laughs> some San Francisco's former Silicon Valley based company and stuff. I forget what the name of the company was. Man, because I feel like they're now they want to attack almost the, the food market or the food supply. We talked about it in yesterday's episode the meat supply, uh, JBS uh, meat supplier being having a cyber attack if you can take down these infrastructures of the past and and implement something new well guess what if you're implementing something new you're going to control it and obviously it's not necessarily about complete and total control but manipulation as long as you can push something into the direction in which favors you you're good if i can get something that's more 70 percent that favors me as opposed to something that's 50 40 percent favoring me then guess what i'm gonna manipulate that thing into making it be more seven percent favorable towards the outcome that i wanted to have if my goal is to control the world's food supply guess what i'm gonna do things in a manner which will manipulate everyone's mindset and the food supply manufacturer change itself that's in more of my favor. I don't have to have complete control over it, but as long as I manipulate it, I'm good. And you can manipulate anybody just by lying to them, giving them a false story. Because obviously, we're not there in China. You know, majority of the world's population, and when I say majority, I mean like 99% of the world's population is not there in this certain province of China, which was, yeah, yeah Xinjiang. In that province of China and stuff like that, nobody knows exactly what's going on. So they can do whatever they want to. <laughs> and we just kind of have to either accept it or sit here and, and cipher through the facts and be like, you know what? I know what you told me, but I don't think that shit makes sense. And I don't sound right. And there's nothing wrong with that because these are some devious people. Man, everyone around you is shady. I don't, I don't want to say that in the sense that you got to be extra paranoid to everybody, but. Go with your gut feeling, man. You know, if something doesn't sound right. Hey, it's not your fault it doesn't sound right. It's, it's, not, it's not your fault, man. It's something I tell my kids when we deal with certain individuals, stuff, I'm like, hey, it's not your fault if that person says something that didn't make sense. That's not your fault. Yeah, like, this shit don't make sense, bro. It don't make sense. <laughs> like, <laughs> make them make that shit make sense, man. <laughs> make them explain it to you in a manner in which you can understand. And you don't understand it, guess what? Something's off about it, man. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so the commission statement advised the public to avoid sick or dead poultry. Fucking up the chicken, man. Chicken, bro. They're coming out of my meat. I don't eat meat and chicken. And turkey. I rarely eat pork anymore. After I seen how pork is pushed together and stuff like that. And a lot of different things. And... I mean, I still eat bacon every now and then when I go to a restaurant or something like that, but I mean, actually, I never ate that much pork when I think about it. If I did, it was while I was at work, while I was still in the Air Force. Anytime we cook like a pork butt, pork roast, something like that, then I would eat it, but I I really don't actually eat that much. I never really was a big pork person anyways. I just like beef and chicken, and I make sure I have some uh, fish, salmon, cod, uh, and... uh. And have a turkey or whatever else, but <laughs> in two articles back to back, we go we talk about the beef being fucked up. Now this is about ch chicken being fucked up. I don't get my chicken from China. Actually, I think a lot of my meat comes from Australia <laughs> and some parts of the United States and Canada for for the company I use, a uh, butcher box. But I was actually looking up that last night, just double checking. Even the things that you products that you buy and the meat and stuff like that. Like I go back and double check just to make sure the company didn't hit no flip the switch and all of a sudden they got this shit from somewhere else. So gotta make sure everything is either organic or are completely uh 
you know, like your beef, you want your beef to be grass fed all the way from birth to finish. And it's, instead of grains, you don't want to have grains because then they having grains, they're probably eating GMO corn and shit. I'm just saying. But, but this whole new strain of bird food that I really wanted to point out to people that there literally is a new virus all the fucking time. There's literally something new strain of mutating a mutated strain of another virus. It's, there's literally something all the time. If you don't pay attention to your own personal health and take care of yourself, this is something I had to have, I had to have learned. I know. Yeah. I've been forced to learn over these past few years. I talked enough about my medical issues, but I bring it up because one, I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little still self-conscious about it because it kind of hurts my ego. And two, I just want to share with other people that can't rely on others, man. I was talking to someone the other day. I was thinking like, you know what, man? Like, why the fuck do we call doctors doctors? Right? When you think about any fantasy video game or, or, or movie, something like that, you always hear them call healers, right? But we don't call doctors healers. Why is that? Because <laughs> healer implies that you're healing somebody, right? Doctor just implies that, well, you're treating a patient for something. It might work, it might not work, but you're not necessarily healing them. You're kind of putting a Band-Aid over their wound, but the wound who just it heals on its own or that's it. I mean, pretty much you ain't doing too much. I don't even know if you want to, that's not, probably not a good analogy, a Band-Aid. It's just really just doing something <laughs> and just saying that you did something and you get paid to do it. Probably from a, uh, Actually, we know why the doctors get paid from. Doctors get paid for um, prescription companies, stuff like that. Prescription medicine companies. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. Okay. 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 Let's read this real quick. It says, the commission statement advised the public to avoid sick or dead poultry. It also advised against direct contact with live poultry. <laughs> While those with fevers or respiratory symptoms should wear a mask and seek medical attention, it added. Of course. Of course. Of course. Why would you be around dead or sick poultry anyways? Unless you're a farmer. And then why would you have direct contact with live poultry either? Unless you're a farmer or unless you're about to kill your own fucking chicken. And eat it. It says Wuhan University. Wuhan University. Pathologist Yang Ziku, Ziku, uh, Zanku, my fault, told Communist Party newspaper, The Global Times. You know, it's how everything is called time. Right? Has anybody realized that? Like, everywhere you go, every country has, like, something times. India times, Britain times, London times, Australia times, uh, Global Times. Uh, I think Sun times, Japan times. Uh, there's all... Like, why Why is that? I don't even know. And I don't even know if there's an extension of the New York Times paper itself or what. I think some of them might be, but I was just thinking about that. I know I'm so random at times, but man, it's hard for me to... I try not to skip over anything too much because, man, everything means something. And everything's in a connection to something else. It's just a lot of times we overlook the obvious. And that's the obvious to me. It's like, God damn, why is everything called Global Times? <laughs> Or some type of times, right? And then when you far as a newspaper article. So it says on Tuesday, the H1N, the H1ON3 spreads through respiratory droplets. <laughs> it's the same fucking thing, bro. <laughs> it's the same. It's just, it's just coronavirus, man. <laughs> respiratory droplets among avian species and is deadly to wild birds and poultry. No. <laughs> Isn't that the same story they had with the bats? <laughs> it's the same story they did in their event 201 thing, too. Like, uh, and all of a sudden, watch this shit jump the humans. Because <laughs> somebody ate the dead chicken. <laughs> hey, come on, man. Don't believe this shit, man. What was what it? Uh, what was it? Flavor Flav at a public enemy? Don't believe the hype? <laughs> like, come on, man. Don't believe this shit, man. Uh, it says, quote, it presents a low risk to humans, and there is no evidence to indicate uh, that the virus uh, can cause human to human transmission. Yang was quoted. <laughs> you hear it, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. So, H1ON3 is just a virus amongst uh, avian, uh, birds, poultry, chicken, 
And there's no human to human transmission case yet. <laughs> watch, watch the shit get flipped upside down and all of a sudden it's spreading around killing people. Because then they just said there's no case to case. So what? So what? <laughs> so what? This dude, <laughs> what he do? He ate the dead chicken <laughs> on the farm or something? Like what? But are we going back to the, the AIDS thing where somebody fucked a monkey? Like, come on, man. Like, they just, this is, it's making shit up, man. It's making shit up. And those birds are disease in itself. It would just die with them and stay with them. It says, last February, a city in central China culled nearly 18,000 chickens following an outbreak of H5N1 bird flu. <laughs> <laughs> like all these different strains, man. The strain is highly path uh, pathogenic among poultry and rarely <laughs> infects humans. <laughs> However, rare cases of human infection have led to a fatality rate, a fatality rate of six percent, according to the United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention. <laughs> Come on. So you don't sit, you don't think they're gonna take that shit to the Wuhan lab or some other level four bio lab and test it on people? Or to, I fall make tests and make experiments and then try to see if they can get it to be a weaponized version to have placed on humans. Hell, you don't think someone's gonna just find out a or, or fun rather a study just in case, or not just in case, but fun fun a study just to see if they can make this into a virus that can affect humans. That's what scientists do. That's what people do. Curiosity kills, literally. <laughs> and don't give me that shit. I know they've been, everybody, I kind of want to touch on an article. I was going to do it today, but I think I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, get a little hint. Uh, Wuhan lab, Dr. Fauci and his emails got released. Uh, Zero Hedge, I think, was uh, the originator of those emails releasing. And uh, <laughs> it almost seems like Dr. Fauci was put on a pedestal last year and now he got to take or he got to fall on the sword because uh, he's a pawn himself. But I don't want to say he's a pawn. He's a part of the game. He's a chess piece, but <laughs> he knew what the fuck he was doing as well. That's why I want to say he was a pawn. Like he knew even if he was being controlled or manipulated, he knew what he was doing. And he probably allowed himself to be that way anyway. But uh, I don't want... I, I feel like the narrative is being set up for him to be the fall guy, and he should not be the fall guy. He's a part of it, but he's not the head piece of it. He's not the king. He's not the queen. He's none of that stuff. He's just a part of it. He's probably like a rook or something. Like he, he, He's a part of it. He's moving around doing stuff, but he's not the head person behind all this stuff going on in the Wuhan lab, uh, and all the Vir University of Wuhan Virology Lab, and all those other things that's going on, and the funding and all that stuff. He's just a part of it. By what we're just gonna be on the lookout for this, see if, if anything else arises out of this uh so called once incident that's not a big deal, but the person got sick and got released back. So he got sick and he got released and put into quarantine, if I'm not mistaken, when I read through the article. Yeah, because it was mid on April twenty third and then April twenty eighth. But it's fucking June. <laughs> Like, I just wanted to put that out there. It's June, right? This article came out yesterday on June 1st. Today is June 2nd. <laughs> but this shit happened back in April. <laughs> oh, you can't make this shit up, man. Why? Stuff like this should be reported sooner, right? But it's not about that. It's about whoever... Uh, Whatever they want to have it be about, they'll, they'll release the information whenever they choose to release the information. And like I said, the information that they're releasing, it has to, you can only take it with a grain of salt because it's damn near over a month since <laughs> this shit happened. And all of a sudden, you, we're finding out about this. I don't know. It, it was already reported in China before then. I don't, I don't think it said it. But nonetheless, it found its way over here to America, so here we are. All right, I wanted to, that's all messed up. I right, wanted to talk about this article. This is from Reuters. This is from yesterday as well, June 1st. It says EU, which is your European Union, 
set to unveil plans for a block wide digital wallet. So I know I have some listeners over in uh, Europe. So hopefully you guys listen to this and hopefully you're aware of it and you've been following some of the cryptocurrency and stuff like that. Because clearly we don't have no power. Let's be honest, man. We don't have too much of an impact or influence to kind of change a lot of the stuff. Yeah. Uh, the power is really in knowledge if we can all educate each other and not go into necessary arguments or debates or anything like that but just make everybody aware and what i mean aware i'm not talking about honestly i'm not talking about the social issues these social justice shit i'm talking about be aware of the money be aware of the government be aware of these corporations be aware of the things that they do behind the scenes and that you have to cipher through all these different articles that vaguely give you actually any information or any details you got to pay attention to all this stupid stuff or not stupid stuff i can see yeah i, I get annoyed by it. you got to pay attention to all this boring shit because what it is to be honest it's boring i get excited because i know from history proven that if i read enough of this stuff i can figure out what's going on in the world because it's all there you just gotta read a bunch of random things what it seems like random but it's not so it says the European Union is set to unveil plans for a block-wide digital wallet on Wednesday, following requests from member states to find a safe way for citizens to access public and private services online. The Financial Times reported the app will allow citizens across the EU to secretly access, access a range of private and public services with a single online ID, according to the Financial Times report on Tuesday. Try to look at Financial Times. Can't look at that Financial Times because fucking you got to subscribe for it. Come on, man. Information at least should be free for people, man. If I'm, especially if I'm just reading text. Like, come on. It says the digital wallet will securely store payment details and passwords and allow citizens from all 27 countries to log onto local government websites and pay utility bills using a single recognized identity. The newspaper says citing people with direct knowledge of the plan. So if you got a digital wallet, guess who's going to come with that digital wallet at some point? Digital fucking money. Right, right, because this is a financial times report about a digital wallet. What are you keeping in your wallet? Your ID. What else are you keeping there? Your money, right? Whether it's your paper fiat currency or whether it's your debit card, your credit card. You know, <laughs> you got something in your wallet. Money, ID. That's what it's about. So, obviously, some places in, in European Union are going to have some nations, some countries are going to have their passport their vaccine passport, stuff like that. Guess where that's going? Your digital wallet, along with your digital money. Central bank digital currencies is not coming. It's already here. They just haven't told anybody yet about it. They just like to be like, oh yeah, well, we're gonna do some research into it. Man, you know the fucking night. By the time they tell you they're doing research into it, they already have a plan, right? Now they just need something to happen so they can speed it up and act like, oh yeah, well, we kicked into high gear. And we really got just out in a rush. It was like the vaccine last year. Uh, everybody was talking about it. Trump was like, oh, yeah, we, we, we can really get these vaccines out in a time in a, in a fast manner. Maybe he already knew about it. And that's why he already had people developing vaccines before then. I'm just saying, like, you can't put anything past anybody. I mean, you could take that as a good thing or a bad thing, wherever you want to have it as. But it's interesting that you're going to have a digital wallet. You already have a digital one being uh, being deployed, been deployed really, for since the end of last year in China. Uh, Federal Reserve talked about it before Jerome Powell saying, "Oh yeah, we are looking into central bank digital currencies." And, yeah, shut the fuck up. You guys been doing that. You guys been doing that. And then now you have a digital wallet coming out. And you know, I think there was something else too from Australia, New Zealand. They were doing something as well. Uh, it says the EU-wide app can be accessed via fingerprint or retina scanning, among other methods. Get the fuck out of it. This is it. This is it. This is where everybody wanted, right? We thought I wanted. We all wanted sci-fi stuff, but we we wanted flying cars, right? We wanted flying cars. We wanted to live like the Jetsons. Somehow we end up living like <laughs> like Total Recall or something like that, where we gotta be where biometrics rule everything. Now it's a face scan. It's an eye. Uh, retina scan it's a fingerprint scan which it's, it's okay 
like don't get me wrong with this stuff. This technology, yes, is warrant. It's not warranted, but it's it can be used for good. The thing about technology, it's not good or bad. It's just neutral. The people that utilize technology determine whether they're going to remain neutral or whether they're going to use it for completely good or use it for completely bad intentions. Given your information via your fingerprint and retina scan, they can sell that to different countries around the world. They can do whatever they want with it. That's the kind of thing that you give up. If it, I noticed too, I did this on my butcher box website last night. I was looking up the information, just double checking it, talking about the source and the meat. And I've been seeing it lately on some uh, uh, websites. You scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says like the contact. Like, let, me, let me scroll all the way down to the bottom of this real quick. And it's not there. Nothing like that is there. Of course not. But you go to certain websites, you scroll to the bottom and stuff. You can see things. It'll say like uh, either contact information, stuff like that. I've been noticing a lot of things that says do not sell my info. So I decided to click on it. And there's a whole list of different things that they fucking sell your info. And it's like, and even then... You could say you opt out of it, but you might have to opt in because it says, as far as butcher boxes, like we might have to sell your info in order to uh, complete a transaction with one of our sellers or one of our buyers or whatever of the meat. I'm assuming where where they get the meat from and stuff like that. And I'm just like, wow, wow. So in order for you to sell me something, you have to you already made a deal with whoever one of your suppliers to take some of my information. And it might not seem like nothing, but if you can notice my food patterns and how I eat and stuff, it's more, yeah, you can determine what I want to have next and stuff like that. And of course, it's money perspective business is first, but what happens if they decide to sell that to, I don't know, my local government? What if they decide to sell to my state government? Really even worse, what if they decide to sell it to the United States federal government? Now they know exactly what I want to eat and stuff. Next thing you know, all of a sudden, you get a heart disease or you get something that's going on. And he's like, you know, I felt like I always ate healthy. And I did good stuff. They're like, oh, well, actually, you've been eating this this meat right here from this company for the longest. Or they are be like, oh, well, it says you've been eating a lot of pork. I think I brought this scenario before. This, I think this scenario has been brought plenty of times around different people, uh, from different people around the Internet, around the world, really. Yeah. All of a sudden, I think it was like a Black Mirror episode too, something like that. But all of a sudden, you sitting there and you're looking and you're talking to your doctor, and you're like, yeah, I feel like I always ate healthy stuff. And your doctor pulls up your information, and what we got from your butcher box website that you've been ordering a lot of bacon. And in fact, you have the bacon for life deal. So, I mean, you know what happened to eat a lot of bacon. So, you got to watch that, you know, clog up your arteries. In fact, I don't think we can do this for you, or I don't think uh, your insurance will provide this certain procedure or this treatment for you because it seems like you've been unhealthy anyway. So, you didn't live up to your part of the agreement that you had on your insurance plan. It's that simple, man. Is that simple? Wonder why? Because that's just business. That's just business. And as fucked up as business is, that's how it goes. Insurance is a scam, <laughs> it's a scheme, but it's business. You wonder why it's allowed? Because government is allowed. Because governments want to have insurance. Because guess what? That's how people make their money too on insurance claims, stuff like that. Government sells out government insurance. <laughs> it's all business, man. What in Geico? Some in Geico called the acronym for Geico is government insurance. Something else I can't remember. But so this whole EU thing is interesting because it's coming out with digital law. Like I said, the next step clearly is digital money. Like it, it right there. I actually seen this article on Yahoo. I think I looked it up and found it on Yahoo News or Yahoo Finance. And I, I don't know if that article is talking a little bit more about digital wall or not. But it says, uh, to finish off this article, it says EU officials will enforce a structural separation to prevent companies to access user data, user data from using the wallet for any other commercial activities such as marketing new products. That's bullshit. That's bullshit. We, we know that's bullshit. Uh, it says Brussels is engaged with, in talks with member states to provide guidelines on technical standards for rollout of the digital wallet, which is expected to be fully operational in about a year. So it'll probably be a release in the next couple of months. It's already being tested, probably in the beta, uh, probably definitely beyond alpha stage, probably going to the beta testing stage, more of a public beta testing stage. 
And it'll probably be out by the end of this year. <laughs> like, if not sooner, man. If not sooner. They just be saying shit, man. But it kind of go along with a... Uh, it, it says block-wide. Plans for a block-wide digital wallet. I'm assuming they're talking about blockchain. Yeah, I'm assuming they're talking about a blockchain. Let's see. Will let me go to that Financial Times? I think, it, yeah, see? I had to subscribe for it just to read the fucking article. It's so stupid, man. You know what? Everybody's trying to make their money. Everybody's trying to make their money. $40 a month. Be informed with the essential news and opinion. $40 a month? $40 a month for digital. Get on the internet and look up shit. $40 a month. I, what the fuck? Like, at, that, at those prices, I better be getting some... I better, I better be getting the, the back the back door, behind the scenes information. I, I better be sitting there like I'm, in, I'm part of the Bilderberg group. Like I had like for forty dollars a month, I you better give me insider trading tips. Like that's what I better get. Like <laughs> like that's that's literally what I better get like, for forty dollars a month. That's insane. Like, like am I reading this wrong? And three hundred seventy two dollars for one year. Huh. That's 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 not cool at all. Whatever. But yeah, I, I wonder if this is on uh blockchain or something like that. I assume it would have to be because blockchain would be the perfect thing to uh uh to encrypt and and, and account for it and and kind of hold onto that data. Then I wonder what blockchain would be on. <laughs> uh, oh yeah yeah there's a lot of different things that could be on and stuff. But I wanted to show you guys this uh I had seen this on Twitter the other day. Or was he, no, it was this morning. It was this morning. Then I think Digital Asset Investor on his uh, one of his videos this morning, he talked about it as well. So we talk about Ethereum and blockchain and cryptocurrency. Uh, Ether, the token, the main token of the, of the Ethereum network. Talk about it before the Ethereum, their, their issues with their proof of work. They know it doesn't work. That's why they're switching over to proof of stake with Ethereum 2.0. That's why you have Ethereum Classic. As a separate thing. Ethereum now is a fork of Ethereum Classic. It sounds confusing. It's really not. Don't wrap your head too much around it. Just it's basic and simple. But at the same time, uh, you have issues with proof of work, and then you also have issues with uh, it using up so much energy. So you know the whole push for climate change, greener bull, 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 bullshit that's going on and stuff. And then also with Ethereum, it's it's. <laughs> And now they're starting to say, oh, it's going to take about a couple more years to switch over for, uh, to 2.0 to uh, uh, proof of stake. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. That's what I was like, uh, when is the theory 2.0 supposed to come out? I was thinking about it the past couple of days. I'm like, I don't think this is going to come out no time soon. Like, I don't think they'll really prepare for this. <laughs> Yeah, it should have been. It should have been. Ethereum's been around for a while, so it should have been switched over to 2.0. But you have things like Cardano, which I think is a proof of consensus, and the Flare Network, which is a fork from XRP uh, Ledger, which would be a proof of, I think, a proof of stake or a proof of consensus network. So, with that being said, a lot of NFTs are done on Ethereum blockchain. And I'm saying all this because I'm trying to put out there, you got to pay attention. It's funny. me. All they talk about is Bitcoin and Ethereum, yet they're outdated technology, right? <laughs> because they don't want nobody to invest on the newer things. They'll tell you about Ethereum when Ethereum is 2000 4000 a token. But they weren't really talking about Ethereum too much when it was like $100. And it started to get up a little there, and then they started wanting to talk about more. Bitcoin is at so you know X amount thousands of dollars and stuff, whatever. But they know the average person can't hold on to it, or then you know they're not gonna be able to afford one, let alone multiple ones. Because even if you get one, you really don't make no money unless you have thousands of a token. And the only way you can get thousands of a token if it's is under a dollar, or at least under five dollars. So you got 
Cardano, which I already sold and made money off of, it's interesting on that because that was like under a dollar for the longest. And then it just shot out over a dollar. And then it went up to over two dollars. Then it came back down to now things like dollar fifty as far as the crypto crash taking part of that. XRP, we talk about all the time. That's there, right? All these different things that are there that have better technology, better organizations, more decentralized than Ethereum and Bitcoin, yet they don't get talked about. Because this is what the mainstream media does. This is what these bankers do. This they want you to they want you to come in, buy up Ethereum, buy up some Bitcoin, really some Satoshi, because you're not buying a whole Bitcoin. They want you to buy up some Dogecoin and stuff like that. You put money into the market, raise it up a little bit. Meanwhile, the whales, the big the the people who have a lot of, of the Bitcoin or whatever you want to call it, next thing you know, they sell it. The market crashes and you don't lost your fucking money because you weren't paying attention because you don't really know what's going on. Because you're like, oh, I just got to buy this and hold on to it. And then you see the price start going down. So you panic sell. But really, the price going down don't mean shit. If you, like I said, I've been in this about four years now. Prices go down. It doesn't mean nothing. Because guess what? In the next couple of weeks or next month, it will not just go back up. It will be doubled than what it was before. Because the market is always constantly going up. If you look at the overall trend for the past five, six, seven years of some of these assets, some of these digital assets, these cryptocurrencies, it's been going up and up and up and up. Technology is only getting better, so yet this stuff will go up and up and up. But if technology is getting better and you have Bitcoin and Ethereum, one of the first two, guess what? They're outdated. They're already decades old now. Right? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're, yeah, damn, they are. They're already over a decade old now for the most part. I don't know what, I think Ethereum came out in 2012, 2013 maybe? I don't know. But, uh, so you talk about all your NFTs being on Ethereum blockchain. So th that helps Ethereum uh, go up. You're talking about decentralized finance or cryptocurrency, blockchain and stuff. That helps Ethereum value goes up or the Ether token on Ethereum network go up. But what happens when someone else comes underneath and says, ah, fuck it, we do a better at a cheaper cost. Because that's what you have with Ripple, that we have with XRP Ledger, that we have with uh, Cardano and ADA, their token. That's what you have with uh, some other things too as well. So what we have here is the <laughs> fucking weird name for a website, but it's 888tnw.com. And basically it's NFTs, it's digital artwork, it's uh, stuff like that. So it talks about the first step into our world for rising stars to showcase their first ever minted piece and place for them to be discovered. So it's literally taking your artwork and things that art museums, so that uh, painters, you know, when they have their showcase, stuff like that. Now it's putting in more of a digital format of it and a way for artists to get more of the money back. So it says artists will have the opportunity to progress to the main zones by a monthly commission vote. Uh, it says the main thing, established artists can mint their own NFTs and share them with the world at 888, the new world. We certainly believe less is more when it comes to the amount of artwork released. And then we have your drop. It says the pinnacle is a, the pinnacle in an artist's career. Drop day will be dedicated to one artist and one artist only similar to the traditional art world. This is what I was talking about. All it's take, all we're doing is taking what has been physically done traditionally and making it digital just so we can move stuff faster around the world because we are because of the internet we are globally connected now actually we've always been globally connected through the spirituality and consciousness but you know nobody really pays attention to that shit even though we should but the digitally speaking we are being connected through the internet and that's where you're gonna have a global Society, I mean, it's gonna happen one way or another. We just don't want to be forced into it, and definitely don't want to be under no authoritarian, totalitarian, communist rule either. But it's saying, similar to the traditional art world, where artists prepare for months to create an exhibition, this is where artists get the chance to really tell a story through their work. So, plain and simple, you're taking your NFTs and different things that you do in the traditional art world and making it digital. And it's not going to be on Ethereum where you're not having to worry about paying 
high gas fees or fees when you do something because you did a transaction on Ethereum network, but because the fees are so high, you got to pay these fees in order to pay off the miners who, who are mining those tokens or those Ether tokens for the Ethereum network for you to complete your transactions on it. Wow, right? Wow. <laughs> it says that 888, the new world, we don't believe in platforms charging artists 15 to 4% commission to showcase their work. And we certainly don't believe in galleries charging up to 50%. If we truly are going to create a new world, then we need to put artists first. And that means changing things up a lot. At 888, the new world, we believe 8.888% is fair. So I guess that's why they call it 888. So that is your, I'm assuming that's your fee or your commission or whatever. So right there off the bat, if you're an artist, especially if you're getting into NFTs and digital artwork, which makes me think I need to tell my friend about this. This is what you, this is the place where you need to be at. Because if you're on Ethereum, you getting charged out the ass for it, your fees and stuff like that and commission. This is where we're going with all this because it's just basic business, man. Like, it, I talked about it the other day, I think, when you talk about real, if we ever had a real capitalism and free market society, what you really would have is people trying to offer a better business model, better business plan for that will better benefit the customers because why do I need to charge one person or, or a bunch of people high price for a product when I can offer the product at a lower cost but still have quality and that way I can expand my customer base. I'd rather have, I'd rather sell something to a million people as opposed to selling a high uh, value product or over cost product to a few hundred thousand people. Because you get your money to a whole bunch of millions of people. God, I hope that made sense. <laughs> but yeah, so with this AA, the New World Order, I can't, I just said the New World Order. The New World, so AA8. TNW.com, A A eight, the new world dot com. So this is on the Flare Network, which is from XRP Ledger, which is from Ripple. <laughs> it's like we talk about all being connected. This is what it is. What's up, Michael Weaver? But this is what it's all about and stuff right here. When you have the the Flare Network. Flare Network is going to take over Ethereum Network. What is Ethereum going to be when you have mining costs on the Flare Network under a dollar, right? We have less than 1% versus Ethereum as far as carbon emissions. We have 1,000 per, uh, per second transactions. Ethereum Network won't be nothing. And, you know, and, then, and it's not like I hate these networks and stuff, but it's being objective and seeing what's going on. Like when they're screaming one thing, and you see the price of it, but you look at some other stuff and you're like, well, what's, what's wrong with these other things? How come you guys don't talk about this? How much have you actually heard about Flare? How much have you heard about Star, uh, the Spark token? The Flare is supposed to come on line this month. And it's not even talking about Codius or PolySign. Like, there's so many things that is going on in conjunction with Ripple and the XRP Ledger. But the lawsuit thing is kind of a, I know, right? It does make me think of the New World Order. I can't help but say that. But it does, with the whole thing with a ripple lawsuit and stuff that's going on, it kind of throws me off. Was, or not throws me off, but it throws certain people off because it's a distraction. Fuck the lawsuit, right? The lawsuit doesn't mean that this <laughs> ripple and all the different partnerships and all the different uh, 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 spinoffs from the XRP ledger, forks of the XRP ledger, they got a flood network, all the different things going on, it's still in effect, right? And, that, and ripple is going to do an IPO as soon as they're done with a lawsuit. You want to know why? Because the lawsuit doesn't mean shit. It's just there to distract the masses and be like, oh, don't buy this XRP at a low price because of the Ripple lawsuit. I already have friends miss out on money. It's like, oh, man, I sold my stuff. Did you sell yours? I'm like, no. No, I didn't sell mine. Oh, man, I, I shouldn't have sold mine. I was like, why the fuck did you sell yours? Like, what did you do that for? Oh, man, I, just, I don't know. I just sold it. I'm like, ah, you know, because of the lawsuit and stuff. I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> You got screwed. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I, I've been holding on to mine. I mean, I have been spending mine, but for my own personal financial reasons and stuff. But at the same time, <laughs> I invested so much and stuff. I was able to kind of 
use some of that to live off of at, at the same time. And as it's been going up during this whole lawsuit, I was like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Now it helps me put more money towards a house, helps me pay my rent, and do different things like that. You got to pay attention to the actual details and the facts. And don't listen to what these people in the media tell you. So hell, don't listen to me. Do your own research. Figure that shit out on your own. Because it's right there. What is it? The proof is in the pudding? Which I never really understood that metaphor now. Think about it, but whatever. It's right there. So it makes you think about NFTs, Ethereum Network, all this stuff. Flare alone in the Flare Network and the centralized finance Flare as well, or Flare Finance rather, they're all coming right they're all coming <laughs> and that's what blows me my mind about this xrp ripple and stuff is coming yet we all they just sit back and act like it's not there and it's like it's such a disinterest that some of these media outlets uh you got squat box uh cnbc uh cnn uh julie hadley she talks about it every now and then and then you got like all these people that are bitcoin maxis and stuff like that it, or, and people that are on the Ethereum and NFT is like, oh, this is so great. But it's like this outdated technology. That's outdated technology. There's nothing wrong with it. But don't worry, because Flare Network is going to come on. And guess what? You can have your Bitcoin and Litecoin, Dogecoin transactions on the Flare Network, right? Flare Network is designed to work in cooperation with the Ethereum Network. During this time, you see that Ethereum is going to take years, years to get their 2.0 out. So what are you going to do? They're going to have to solve their problem of their gas fees, right? It just says right here, their gas fees, minting costs under a dollar. And then, or we're talking about minting as far as, uh, I believe NFTs anyways, but also talking about gas fees and proof of work on the Ethereum network. And then you're talking about your carbon emissions. It's all coming, man. Uphold. I talked about this before. You guys should be on uphold as well. Cause if you're on uphold, pay attention to that. Uphold has released. The universal, I talked about this one of the past episodes of the podcast, Uphold has released the universal uh, carbon token. And I, I had to go back over to try to understand a little bit. But look at the partnerships behind the universal protocol on the, uh, the Uphold or uh, universal protocol carbon token. Look that up. Do your research on that. Look who is behind that. You'll find somebody named Greg Kidd. You don't know who Greg Kidd is? Do your research on him. <laughs> These people are just all over the place, just planting little seeds in every little aspect of this kind of blockchain, cryptocurrency, decentralized finance realm. They're literally setting up a whole new world order <laughs> right in front of our eyes, but it's like nobody's paying attention. And it, oh man, it kind of like just, oh, it fucking irritates me. I'm not gonna lie, it really does because it's right here. If you're going to be into cryptocurrency, you're gonna really going to be into this shit. Like I said, I've been in for four years. If you're really going to be into it, you have to read these articles. You have to read the white papers. You have to not necessarily read the white papers all the way, but you have to pay attention to the partnerships, the dealings, who associations they have with. Why is XRP? Why is XLM? You know, Stellar Lumens? Why is Ripple? Why are they talking to IMF? Why are they talking to the BIS? Why is Christine Lagarde talk about uh, crypto, uh, cryptocurrencies and central bank digital currency and why has she mentioned xrp before right these and yet no one talks about this stuff yeah everybody talks about bitcoin why do you think they talk about bitcoin in the sense of oh it's for this it's for that they already know what they're going to use bitcoin for and they know at some point in time they're going to be done with bitcoin and they're going to do use it for something else they're already going to move on to the next thing that's what it comes down to it, it it blows my mind with this stuff, man. I uh, appreciate all the follows. I just look down and all of a sudden, man, everybody started following. It's probably because D Live just finally decided to consistently put me on under their podcast category. I think I talked too much about politics and, and coronavirus and COVID nineteen. They didn't like that, so they, they hit me for the longest, <laughs> and they're probably gonna hide me again. But I've been talking more about cryptocurrency and finance and economics. So maybe if I stay on this topic for a little while for the next few months and they'll they'll allow me to be uh, pushed out and stuff like that. So <laughs> I gain new followers. But kind of finish this off with this whole 888 thing or whatever. 
you have the believers. I can't believe they even called it that. So it's owned and operated by these lists of people. And of course, for the majority of people, uh, I want to say around the world, but definitely in America, especially my age, 34. I mean, I grew up with <laughs> seeing Paris Hilton and uh, Nicole Richie and stuff acting fucking stupid for money. But they got paid a lot of money, which is insane. That she's close to a billion dollars. But obviously, she ain't a fucking idiot. She knows what she's talking about. She actually has a nice understanding of economics and finance, too. So there you go. But Paris Hilton is a part of this. And some of these other people I don't know, I'm assuming they're going, this, since this, we're talking about NFTs and we're talking about artwork, I'm assuming they're in the art world, uh, art world, or art realm. And. And, and you know what? Fuck it. I, I was gonna do this on my own time, but I want to kind of look up. I want to like. I just want to see one of these people's names, like who they are, and like uh, exactly what do they do. So took one slime Sunday because I know Paris Hilton. She does. Uh, she does some DJing and stuff like that. But all these people are, are owned and created it, which is interesting because it, the tech is sponsored by Flair Network. A lot of, when they say thing the world will run on Ripple, they're not just talking about money. They weren't just talking about uh, cross border payments and financial transactions amongst banks. <laughs> they're talking about all this digital stuff, man. This is insane. And when Ripple IPO hits, I'm definitely getting some uh, stock in on Ripple for sure. Slime Sunday. So Slime Sunday is a digital. Collage artist known for his bizarre and erotic. Erotic. Am I reading that? Erotic? Erotic steezic. Hmm. Uh, can I click on this? Ah, fuck it. Whatever. He is most known for the world's force. Oh, and look at that. <laughs> that's, a, that's some wild shit. I don't think I was supposed to show this, man. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> that's. Never heard of this person before, but just because I never heard of it doesn't mean there's a huge fan base of following of them. Uh, I just want like a menu or let's see. And I'm assuming he has all these different NFTs and and just all the different artwork. So he has artwork and so so these people are just artists. But I'm like, what is what is Paris Hilton? What is she? What is she drawing? Uh, New York Times, Penthouse, been on Vice TV, Hunger. I don't even know what Hunger is. Uh, out of Salem, Massachusetts. <laughs> the fucking witch hunt. Uh, it consistently pushes the limits of what is acceptable in mainstream media, exploring censorship through bizarre and erotic topics. Blah, blah, blah. He is often using his work ban from... While, okay, while often having his work banned from social platforms for violating their terms and conditions, and he ironically has amassed a large social following. Since he began sharing his work as NFTs, Slime Sunday has become the sixth. I must get some of these NFTs, man. But I looked into a digital art frame for NFT. It's just like a thousand fucking dollars, man. I'm not paying a thousand dollars for an art frame. Come on, what do I look like? I ain't dropping money like that. And if I have money to drop like that, I still ain't dropping money like that. Like this uh, art is not my biggest thing, but now they start bringing the price, the some of these NFT frames down to like a hundred dollars, then I'll get one, and then I could put up some NFT artwork around my. Maybe I'll just keep it in my bedroom and stuff. Cause I'm gonna use my bedroom as like my bedroom slash office. Maybe I'll do that, and maybe I'll, maybe I'll put some other stuff around the house. But it says uh, he's been involved with projects with J Cole, Lana Del Rey, Katy Perry, J. Babylon and Beck. Huh. Interesting. So that lets you know this. I looked up, we know Paris Hilton is for the most part. And I looked up just one other person just to see what type of notoriety this person has because you got to think about the people. Yes, that person has their own fan base, but also the associated uh, acts or collaborations that might, um, that they might have with other people in other parts of, uh, art as far as music which you just saw with slime sunday a lot of music people and stuff because eventually a lot of music is going to start coming out with uh, you know a lot of musicians are going to artists rappers whatever singers are start coming out with things for uh nfts as well and you see stuff with like snoop dogg and some other people but you're going to want to 
branch out into the NFT because certificate authenticity is pretty much what NFT is going to provide some of these artists and stuff. Go back to the days of Napster and stuff like that. Look at my former podcast episode when I talked about uh, NFTs and I kind of broke some of that stuff down talking about Napster. It's going to help out the artists. <laughs> Which is funny because I'm pretty sure. Let's see if I can look this up real quick. I think it's on here. Oh, let's see. I spelled it all fucking wrong too. What a regular genius I am. I don't know if they have their own website yet or not, but you have the Spring Initiative, which is from, uh, obviously from Ripple. I'm on Ripple's website, but I think it's, what's his name? Oh, man, I can't think of his name right now. I hope he'll say it on his website. And this is old. See, look at this, this is old, 2018. When I talk about things that are always being built behind the scenes, you'll hear a one press article. You'll hear one little thing and that's it. And then you'll hear, never hear anything else about it. But it's still being developed. I think it's like uh, Justin Bieber's manager or something like that. Scooter Braun, I think it, it is. But this is kind of for more of the artists and stuff. Okay, here we go. Since as of today, X Spring has already offered support to Scooter Braun, entertainment talent manager, entrepreneur, and founder of SB Projects, who is pursuing several endeavors that will use XRP to improve artists' abilities to monetize and manage their content. Right? Uh, Stephen Thomas, in, in, inventor of the Interledger Protocol, uh, creator of Bitcoin JS, co-founder of TXT Bear, who just launched a new venture, Coil, to use XRP and the XRP Ledger Protocol. To, X Spring Initiative, Coil, Flare Finance, Flare Network itself, right? <laughs> Interledger Protocol, <laughs> Codius, PolySign, Ripple. Through the use of XRP ledger and the XRP token, it's all over the place, but no one fucking knows about it. And it's like the best kept secret, even though it's not a secret. It kills me, man. And then it says, yes, yeah, uh, Thomas McLeo, uh, serial entrepreneur, co founder, and CEO of Omni, who will soon integrate XRP as a currency into Omni's marketplace. Bart and Brad Stevens, co founder of Blockchain Capital who have the first fund to accept capital calls and digital assets with a focus on driving innovation in the blockchain sector. This is old. This, this is from May, May 14, 2018. This is old news. So now you got to think about where are those projects at now? Are they done? And no one else has talked about them and stuff? Now you see, I just did a, a search for a spring. Nothing really popped up. I want to see, uh, kind of give it more. So Spring Spring is a new initiative by Ripple that will invest in, incubate, acquire, and provide grants to companies and projects run by proven entrepreneurs. Every entrepreneur will use a digital asset, a digital asset XRP and the XRP ledger. Talked about before, XRP is nothing. The XRP blockchain ledger, the distributed ledger technology, is a thing itself. That is a value. The value of these cryptocurrency is not the token and the currency or the so-called cryptocurrency itself. It's in the blockchain network. If the network, if that blockchain, that distributed ledger technology does not have an actual use case, it won't mean shit in the long term. Doesn't mean you can't make money now off of it. Clearly, you can make money now off of it. But when you're talking about investing in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stuff like that, you got to make sure you pay attention to this long-term use case. You got to pay attention to it. Bitcoin long-term use case was just supposed to be a payments method, a payments uh, platform. Clearly, it can't do payments no more because it takes about anywhere between 10 minutes to two hours for a transaction to be completed, while yeah, XRP takes under less than four seconds. So that's why they have the whole store of value. But proof of work doesn't work. We talk about energy consumption, uh, climate change, and all this stuff, greener things. XRP, Flare Finance, don't worry. You can move your Bitcoin on Flare Network. Save the, the cost of mining fees or whatever. Save the, uh, save the cost of energy consumption and things like that. Man, got to pay attention to it. I guess I'm gonna have, maybe I should do some, more, or do some more digging first and then see if I can find other things going on about all this stuff. 
So yeah, even with the spring thing, it's like uh, there's no real press release. Nothing. Uh, let's see, the oldest thing I can find on here is two, uh, 2019. Let's let's click on this real quick. I just want to know what it says. Uh, blah blah blah. So yeah, this is from 2019 on Forbes, which is interesting that Forbes even would do this. <laughs> even though it probably it's probably ain't that much traction anyways. But it says Ripple Spring releases technology to bring XRP to the internet. Wait, what? Ripple Spring releases tech. Okay. Riding a wave of new technological advancement and multiple companies such as Amazon Web Services and Oracle have developed platforms, blah, 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 blah. I don't even think this really goes into what really Spring is and, and, and all the different things that it can do. Ripple's main goal essentially is to provide simple and fast value transfer on the web. We're working on the internet, blah, blah. But see, it's talking about more about global payments and stuff like that. But not saying all the different things that it can't possibly do. But yeah, I'm going to do some more research and, and kind of dig more into this stuff because I haven't heard anything about this stuff. And like, it goes along with uh, Codius and PolySign. They kind of been tight lip about a lot of this. Here's another article. Let's see if it's, well, it's from 2020. Yeah, it's from 2020. Uh, not really say too much. I think I had looked this up too in the past podcast, but I'll definitely have to do some more digging and stuff. And then on tomorrow's episode, I kind of want to talk about Fauci because he's such a great person and what's going on with his emails. And now the narrative is being uh, uh, kind of flipped on his head. And Fauci is really just being a scapegoat and kind of see how they're going to throw him under the bus and stuff and whatnot. But like I said earlier on in, in today's episode, Fauci ain't shit. <laughs> it's not about Fauci. He's just a, a part of the, a piece on the chessboard being moved around and stuff. We got to figure out the head head. The head head. I should have not said it like that. That sounds really weird, right? Head head. It sounds fucking odd. But got to figure out who is the main uh, entities or entities behind what's going on as far as the Wuhan lab and coronavirus and all these fucking viruses popping up all the time and stuff like that. But instead of talking more about how, you know, New World Order, they're trying to manipulate all this other stuff. I think it's, if you don't think that that's going on by now, I don't know what to tell you. It's beyond obvious, right? It's beyond obvious. It's beyond obvious. You can't trust these governments. It's beyond obvious. You can't trust these celebrities, stuff like that. I'm switching gears more. And I want to talk a little bit more about finance because I can feel it coming up. I can see it in these press release, these articles, obviously with a uh, Ripple SEC suit because SEC ain't shit. So you, you can feel it coming up like they're going to crack down on crypto. They're going to crack down on all these uh, different things as far as finance and, and retail investors because, well, they don't want us to have too much fucking money. <laughs> they don't care if some of us slip through the cracks and make our money, but they don't want majority of us to have money. So I know I made some decent amount of money. Uh, and I'm hopefully I can make a lot more and just live comfortably. But I feel like what type of fucked up person would I be if I don't share that information with everybody else, right? I got you got to share that information with everybody else. So I'll definitely be back on tomorrow. Uh, I guess for all the new followers, I hope you uh, add a notification because I don't know what time I'm going to do the podcast tomorrow. I try to do around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, but uh, my kids are out of school <laughs> and they're not really sleeping in, so. Just in case they want to come in, knock on the door, or bother me or whatever, I'm try to do a little bit early. Maybe try to do around 10, 1030, constantly adjusting my time and I haven't been doing it every day. But definitely look out for the podcast. Uh, for all the new followers, follow me on uh, my blog site, DamienJackson22.com. That's D-A-M-I-E-N. Damien, like the omen from the movie. Yes, yes, that's where my mom got the name from. Thanks a lot, mom. I love my name, but... God damn it. That's <laughs> God damn it. That's funny. But DamienJackson22.com. Definitely check that out. You can follow me on Gab and uh, Twitter as well. Go to my blog site. In the top right-hand corner, you'll see the links for my social media and the podcast as well. 
And then you can kind of keep in touch and, and see what I'm talking about as far as these cryptocurrency news and other things going on around the world. As always, do your own research. I'm no fucking buy. I'm just a regular guy on the internet just saying some shit that he happened to find as he was high looking up shit. Nah, I'm playing. <laughs> Sometimes I am high looking up shit, but for the most part, I am sober because you got to be sober mind to understand what the fuck is going on in the world. Knowledge is power. Now is the part where I see all that good shit. Blah, blah, blah. So until next time.